I will start today's video with a question. Imagine you have a magic lamp and a genie emerges out of it. If he grants you one wish, it can be anything you want. What would you ask for? Let me guess what most people would say. Money, power or immortality to live forever without aging. It's a dream that humans have been chasing forever. From mythology to modern science, the elixir of youth has remained a goal because most people do not like growing old. Greek poet Homer called the old age loathsome. Shakespeare described it as hideous winter. If you have ever read Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray, you must know how the protagonist Dorian Gray tried to preserve his youth. He would age only in a painting. We don't have that in the real world as of now. Not yet, but we do have the technology and medicine and they are bringing a silent revolution, one where aging is not inevitable anymore. Companies are betting big money on it and what they have achieved so far, can you be young forever or at least look young forever. Today we will try to read the stated and the unstated, the obvious and the hidden to bring you the full story. Have you ever heard of the fountain of youth? It's been a popular legend for centuries. As the story goes, anyone who drinks or bathes in its waters becomes young again. Uh, it's basically like magic water. Now this may be just a mythical tale, but that did not stop people from trying to find it. Legend says that Alexandra the Great was looking for a river that healed the ravages of age in the, in the 12th century. There was a European king called Prester John. He is said to have ruled over the land of the Fountain of Youth. There was a Spanish explorer called Juan Ponce de Leon. He thought he would find the Fountain of Youth, but it turned out to be the another just fountain in Florida. So, no success. But the quest never stopped. We say age is just a number, a number that comes with signs and consequences. Your hair will turn grey, your skin will sag, your joints will hurt, your eyesight will get worse. All of us will experience it with the age, some sooner than others and that's how it's meant to be. Aging is a biological process. By 2050, the number of people aged 65 or above will triple it, will reach 2 billion the world over. 2 billion people over 65 years of age. You know what else will progress? The pursuit of youth science is making long strides. Wrinkles are already optional, so it's sagging skin, age sports and laugh lines. The medical world has a solution for all of it, Botox. It's a short form of botulinum toxin. Botox started as a way to treat involuntary muscle movements, but that's not what it made it super hit. Its rise happened in the beauty industry. You know what else Botox is called? The fountain of youth. Botox has become the go-to solution for anyone looking to raise aging just a few injections and you look like wrinkles free teen again and with the wisdom of an adult plus it's non-invasive and that what makes it very popular the global botox industry is currently worth 7 billion dollars by 2030 it will be more than 10 billion so it's clearly growing fast but why stop at botox there's a whole range of treatments including surgery you can essentially customize how you look it's like going to spa but with anesthesia and a bigger bill. The global cosmetic surgery market is valued at $55 billion. By 2030, it will be worth $75 billion. It's massive and that raises some very important question. Is too much? Is there a such a thing? Wanting smooth skin is fine, but does that make you young? Surgery can certainly enhance one's appearance if done right, but it cannot halt the natural aging process entirely. We will age internally. We will experience physical and emotional changes. It's part of being human, but some people want to change that too. Until now, living forever was the stuff of science fiction, but some longevity pioneers want to make it a reality. They view aging as a disease, a disease that humans should find a cure for. And there have been some of the many developments like life expectancy has doubled in the last 100 years thanks to medical science. But these people want to take it one step further. They want to make aging optional which brings us to the anti-aging market. It is thriving, it is going through what many call the golden age. By 2025, this industry will be worth 610 billion dollars. So how does it work? There are startups that want to reverse aging. How would they do that using biotechnology? It's an idea that's supported by billions of dollars of investments. And it comes from Silicon Valley's biggest minds, Jeff Bezos, Sam Altman, Larry Page. They're all financing biotech startups that will help you stay young. 
Most of these startups are cloaked in secrecy, but all of them see potential here. The stakes are so high that this could be the new Google. Any company that cracks how to stop aging will be a gold mine. Currently, 50,000 companies in 20 sectors are looking into this. They have more than 10,000 investors. Guess health is the new wealth for investors now. Today's average life expectancy is 75 years. Scientists see it going up to 120 years very soon. But the idea is not to add more years. The idea is to add more healthy years. It's not only about the lifespan, but the healthy span occur the years that a person is free of diseases. That's what these startups wants to achieve. The big names of the Silicon Valley adjoining forces is to change how we age, but they are not the first ones to try. This longevity enthusiast have been trying all sorts of bizarre things. Let's take Brian Johnson for example, he's a tech entrepreneur, he's waging a war against age. And he is injecting himself with young blood plasma, plus to keep things healthy and safe, he asked his own 17 years old son to donate the blood, it was dubbed as vampiric therapy. Did it help? Though not really, but Brian Johnson is not stopping at all, that he's taking 100 pills a day, finishing his meals by 11 am, giving up alcohol, abandoning social life, all to stop aging. Is it really worth it? Well, he certainly thinks so, but longevity expert says your body cannot be had like that. The other idea is merging humans with machines. No, they are not asking you to become a cyborg, at least not yet, but the suggestions are very science fiction. Biohackers inserting microchips under their skin or tech startups replicating the brain basically using technology to cheat death. But while the potential is very significant, so are the risks. The first obvious hurdle is human trials. We cannot hold aging without running tests on humans. The second hurdle is the necessity of treatment. Until now, the FDA, the US regulators, has been reluctant to approve longevity therapies until it targets a particular condition. Authorities do not approve it. Usually they don't. The last and the biggest obstacle is time. An experiment like this will take years, perhaps decades. It may not happen soon, but chances are it will happen eventually. So maybe in the age of tech and treatments, aging will become optional. After all, human beings may discover the elixir of youth. But then again, do we really want it? We say it's a matter of choice. We believe the real power lies not in defying age, but in embracing it. So instead of seeking an ageless existence, perhaps we should embrace the full spectrum of our life because growing old is not the end of the world. It's just the next chapter in the adventure of being human. Thanks for watching. It's requirements.